So, so sick for comedy. I've got to say, your, your kid, man, he's on fire, your boy. He really is. That he is. <laughs> that he is. It was, it was one of those times where, and it was very funny because we have very few times where we're in the studio at the same time. Um, usually I'm off in another studio and he's basically at the, his studio, which is at the back of the house. and um, But this time we were both in, and it was one of those times where he was like, Dad, let's just do something together. <laughs> so I was like, all right, let's do it. So we started, and um, that's what we came with. Do you find it kind? Of, do you find it quite scary to like work with your kids on on music? Because it's like, oh, really? Okay, let's do something. I mean, he's he he's super talented, so it helps if they're super talented, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, he well, he's been in it since he was thirteen. So he's twenty three now, and he's done ten years. So that's the scary bit, I guess. And and he had cut his first album by the time he was just 15. First released album. So he's he has he's been at it for a, for a, for just for for a minute. So he's grown up with it learning it and all of that. So I've I've always I said by the time he was eighteen I said you're you're better than I was easy, so at eighteen I said I didn't know what I was doing, you know, I mean I got so my first deal was at twenty two, you know his first deal was at fourteen, so it's just different. It's just does different. that does, does that mean like his kids gonna get their first deal at like six or something? Probably, <laughs> yeah. probably. I just yeah I do, I know what you mean. What's the word exponentially, but the other way. But yeah, I, I, yeah, I just think the world that we're in now, isn't it? It's weird, right? We came from an age where I guess your dad was always right, your mum was always right, you know, up until a point, and then it was kind of like, okay, you could question them past then. Whereas these days, as you know, you know, kids. They don't need to wait for mum or dad to give them the answer to anything. They can go Google. <laughs> they can go wherever and get, you know, a... Get a million different answers. Exactly. And then, come <laughs> and then they still come back to you. Yeah, exactly. Come, still back come back to you, <laughs> knowing what the answer is and ask you just to check to see if you're on the ball. You know, so I don't know. It's just it is. It's a different world. I, spe- I think especially with anything techie, anything, you know, programming, blah, this, that, whatever. You know, as I say, we, you know, we came from an age where, you know, mixing. There were some mix, some producers that didn't know, that didn't know how to play one instrument and were great producers, amazing producers, but, but knew how to assemble people, finish records, etc do you know what i mean so that's the age that we've come from all the way through to here which is what segues perfectly because that's what interested me so much about this as a project yeah that's a great segue into where we are and who we are and what we're doing um this is that's brilliant but so just for everybody Welcome. This is the Token Tracks Twitter space. We do this with our artists every now and again. Um, and for those that don't know, my name is Tommy D. I'm a music producer and a songwriter and, a, and an artist and a DJ and a whiskey maker and now a tech entrepreneur with Token Tracks. I started Token Tracks back in uh, what well, I came up with the uh, concept really in late 2019. When COVID came along, I was like, well, I need to get my brothers and sisters paid. And I really believe in the the blockchain technology and i really feel there's an intersection here that's really exciting about particularly for independent artists where this could go and so i rang up a bunch of crypto mates and we started token tracks together and um token tracks is a web3 company that has 
uh, all kinds of incredible innovation and Web3 tools for the whole music industry, not just for artists, but for all kinds of different things. And, and um, one of which is, is NFTs. And NFTs are a really interesting, fascinating technology. You probably, if you're new to this space, you may have read some kind of really good stuff about it. You may have read some really bad stuff about it. The underlying tech is what makes it really, really interesting. And then what you build on top of it is, is, what, is, is what also is really, really interesting. And you can do anything with NFT technology. You can uh, basically create a digital certificate of authentication for anything and in music this is really really important because everything in music is unique you know from a beat to a bass line to a, a rhythm to a, a, a guitar part a vocal a melody a lyric a recording of that song you know everything 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 is completely is completely unique and so it's very very exciting to to look at how we can take this technology and do really crazy things with it one of which is this insane concept that we came up with? I think about maybe three or four months ago, right, Kwame? I think you yeah. came to you came to me and we were talking about stuff. I've known Kwame for a long, long time. I'm going to pass it over to Kwame and can tell you all about himself. But I've known Kwame for a long, long time. Um, we both part come from the music industry, the traditional world of music business with major labels and Spotify and all that kind of stuff, and and being in bands and writing songs and producing other artists and incredible, wonderful space, um, which sadly has been getting harder and harder to make any kind of living out of over the last 10, 15 years. And that's why I believe in blockchain technology revolutionizing that and giving artists, creators, curators, collectors a whole new voice and a new kind of interesting um, value metric, which then leads to a whole new income stream. It's, that's what it comes down to. But not just creators. The really interesting thing with blockchain technology is how it can reward fans. And we're going to come on to that shortly. But this is a very, very key thing, is rewarding fans. And so Kwame is one of uh, a bunch of different people that have come to me and asked me about Web3 and what we do, what's going on. And um, and I, I, just, I, I just go, look, it's great. Jump in. Try it, see what you do, and and props to Kwame for doing that. So before uh, before we pass it over to Kwame, just please retweet the room as always. We're going to have some really really good conversation. I feel it tonight. Um, also, you have got an opportunity to win some of Kwame's. In fact, in fact, I'm going to pass it to, to Jess because she's going to tell you what you can win tonight. Jess, tell us what you can win tonight and what you need to do. Well, tonight we. We want to reward some of the community that have showed up tonight. And this is this space is going to be a taste of the insights and the depth that you're going to that if you're a holder of a Kiwana collectible, you'll get this profound insight into um, Kwame's music business insights. So people in the room tonight, we're gonna to have two to give away. So you will be holding an audiovisual collectible. We were playing the music earlier. There's 12 different designs to choose from, from the Token Tracks website. And uh, this is your access to a masterclass with Kwame. 90 minutes going through several topics, which we'll, we'll, we'll briefly, um, we'll, we'll introduce them later on in the space. Um, but we've got some pinned tweets at the top. Which tweet should we go with, Tommy? I think go with the token tracks. Is proud to be working with Kwame uh, on the release of the, uh, the Kwana collection. Would you reckon, or should we? Yeah, I think that's a good yeah. one because there's. I mean, you got a shout out the Mobos last night, mate. That is that is such a great vibe. And the Mobos. I mean, you know, the Mobos. For those yeah, who don't know, yeah. If, if so, people in the room to enter the, was, the giveaway. It um, was. Oi, so, oi. Oh, sorry, sorry, Kwame. Sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I had my mute on. All I was going to say was Mobos was electric yesterday. So just the, explain what the Mobos is for those that don't know. Okay, so okay, so yes, the last night was, obviously we're international right now, so yeah, you're right, you told me to do that. Mobos is Music of Black Origin um, Awards. It's an award ceremony that was set up by Kenya King. Okay. Um, I uh, am fortunate enough to have been involved in it in various forms. You know, I was either part of the one of the voting panels or a, a chair for a, the voting one of the one of the voting committees because there's a, there's a few, you know. Um, 
and 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 just been involved in it in various forms. But Kanye's the boss. <laughs> you know, Kanye's the boss. Kanye's the person who put. I always tell people this. She's the person that put her house on the line to um, and remortgaged it to put on the first um, mobos, basically. And it was at a time where, I guess, black music from the UK was most definitely being overlooked at major label level. And um, along comes this award ceremony that brings you know, glamour that brought um, just intensity, that brought truth, that brought huge vibes. I mean, all, uh, any of the ones that I've been to have been like really, really electric in atmosphere. And yeah, it was, it was, it was really, again, yesterday, you know, I can honestly say did not disappoint. Obviously you had... You know, performances from obviously Black Sheriff being one of my favourites through to Craig David. Craig David's performance was amazing. Nile Rogers, it finished off with obviously playing Sheik Hit. Oh my gosh. I mean, oh. it was like literally, it was wall to wall yesterday. It was just like literally, everyone was a winner. Everybody that stepped up onto that stage. Um, my shout came in the form of uh, Felix the First and Dre Mac. So I'm. Um, part of one of the hats that I wear is with an organization called Creating Vision. Um, we uh, host a thing called the Ultimate Seminar. One of the things, one of the things, one of the branches of that tree is a thing called the A&R Focus Groups, in which we, uh, I guess, put different networks of new A&R people that we've selected in front of major record labels. And one of these uh, groups of people housed uh, uh, Felix the First Manager and also housed um, a beat maker called Finchetti, who the two of them met at our focus group. Um, the first beat that was given to Felix the First was a beat for... Uh, obviously his big hit with Drea Mac, which is his own brand Freestyle, which has, I think, just gone on to now. I, I think it's probably at about 100 million streams. So at the time, you know, it just, you know, the t one handed the other the beat and uh, the, Felix the First then went on that beat, then called in Drea Mac. Drea Mac did her thing to it, or their thing to it, and then that just exploded. Like, on TikTok, went mad. I've never been with a baddie, you know? <laughs> she comes, so I added to the tally. It just went crazy. The dance went mad on it. You know, and, uh, and was this, this was like a this was like a TikTok thing, right? It's something yeah, for yeah. TikTok. It, yeah, it went berserk. I mean, I mean, I think something like a million creations of of, of videos. I mean, it's a, a completely bananas. I mean, and, and um, they and they came through. Let's just let's let's just re reaffirm this. They both, both the artist and the writers of this track and the producer of the track, they all came through Ultimate Seminar. Is that right? Yeah, how does that works? The producer was one of our a &R, was basically an attendee of our a &R focus group. So he was one of our our a and &R focus group scouts. We encourage all of our scouts to also do music as well, you know? So he was a beat maker. He then, one of the other things that we encourage our scouts to do is to network amongst themselves. So they have their own WhatsApp group, you know? They have their own WhatsApp group that literally they do all of their networking through which we dip into from time to time, but most of the time, it's just them, okay? And and what happened was, was that he hands over his beat to Felix the First Manager. Felix the First, Felix the First Manager, who then gives it to Felix the First. Felix the First then raps on the beat. He then calls in Dre and Mac. Dre and Mac then raps on the beat. The tune gets then gets put up onto Spotify, put up onto Spotify, within i didn't even know it wasn't that long it was already up at four hundred thousand. so what happened was i phoned up nick Raphael and i said oi who's the president then was the president of capital records and i just said oi mate you know we did an a and r focus group 
and there was a guy called Finchetti who was who's a producer who was also an A&R scout within the A&R focus group. He said, yeah. I said, he was at your focus group. And he said, what? What's he done? I said, he's done this tune. I said, Nick, you need to go and listen to it. Anyway, a day went past and he couldn't listen to it. I think he was at the vet, something like that, whatever. He then called... I then called him back. I said, Nick, I never do this. I said, if I call you, if I've called you twice about a tune, you know it's on. So you've got to go back and listen to it. So he was like, all right, cool. So he then went back to listen to it and he called back within 20 minutes. He was like, Kwame, this tune's amazing. He said, I want to sign it. So I basically he was like, all right, we'll get, you know, we'll get the, um, we'll get A, we'll get the beat maker's number. B, obviously, we've already, we've got the beat makers and we'll get as well the, the manager's number, we'll get... Get them all connected. We'll get everybody connected. Get everyone so connected. Got... And this this is this is Nick Raphael. This is the head of Crack Capital at the time, right? Head of Capital. This is a guy... And, the, and this, is, this is Kwame just picking up the phone to the head of Capital going, these guys are doing a tune, you need to listen to it. Yeah, 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 whatever, Kwame, yeah, great. Rings him back. These guys are doing a tune. If I ring you twice, it means this tune is fire. You need to go and check this tune. Yeah. And what does he do? He checks the tune. 100 million streams 100. later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100 so this, so this is what I'm talking about, boys and girls out there. This is what I'm talking about. Kwame is not only a good mate of mine, but he is an absolute connector, which is, to me, one of the principal, you know, really important um, jobs that a, a manager does is connecting people up. And Kwame knows everybody. I mean everybody in this industry. He knows it. Kwame has either been with them, worked with them, had deals with them. He's on first name terms with everybody. That's why this is so, 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 so cool, this drop, because there is an opportunity to spend time with Kwame, to get to know him, to understand what his thinking is, but also to help you, potentially help you. You know, only only if it's good. Of course, if it's good. But he, you know, it's it's got to be good. I'm sure Kwame gets 100 million people every day asking him to ring up Nick Raphael. <laughs> yeah. I know I, I know I do. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so, you know, ultimately, it's always got to be good. But this is what we wanted to do. This is all about the experimentation of, of, of digital collectibles with NFTs and, and, and all of this kind of stuff is to experiment with stuff. And what better person to offer up mentoring and and help with the industry, with where it's at, with where it's going, but also with your own particular projects, then Kwame. But you can only do this if you get into and purchase these NFTs that are on our site. So go to tokentracks.com, T-O-K-E-N-T-R-A-X-X.com. Links at the top there in the Jumbotron. Go up there, go and check it out. You'll need to get some tracks tokens, which you can do by going to Bit, uh, a, 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 Jess, can you just remind everybody how it is? Because I, I know they've just recently changed it. How, they, how do they get the tracks Wait, tokens to get this? There's a few options. Let's go Web2 first. We have an integration with Fanly. You can use your card. So if you're Web2 still, no worries. Jump on, use your card. It will create a wallet and you will be holding your first NFT. If you're ready in Web3, we've got options to get tracks. Um, decentralized exchange with ApeSwap. And then we've got centralized exchange on Bitmart and Ascendex. So there's a few ways. If you're if if you've never made a MetaMask wallet, you can you can use your credit card now on the Token Tracks platform. Yeah. And oi. <laughs> Anyway, so it was that tune, basically. It was that tune that did it. Amazing. I, I mean, that is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. And I love the way this works in the music business. Let's let's go let's go back, Kwame. Let's let's talk a little bit about yourself and you and you and what you've gone through. Um, what, what, let's go back to how you got into the industry. You know, what what sort of kicked it off for you, and then how your journey since then. Wow. All right. So. The one, the one bit of advice I would say to anybody who wants to ask a question, right? Stop me while I'm talking. I really don't mind. I'd much rather that you ask the question as it was happening. Don't try and save it up until whatever till the end. Just do it as we go. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> all right. So, 
This is my journey music business voice. About when I'm about 50, when I was about 15, 16 years old, I was very lucky. I got to see a school band. It was a guy called Paul Stanford. He was in a school band and he, he, he put this school band together and I went and watched them. And I remember thinking, do you know what? That band are like good, but I think I could do it better. And I just remember thinking that looks really good. But I also, I liked, there was lots that I liked. I liked the people on stage. I liked what they were doing, but I also liked the fact that they had managed to organize a show, put a show on. I also liked the fact that, you know, they had all clearly organized a rehearsal. So there were lots of component parts that I was just like really intrigued by and really loved. Right? Now, next, I then, you sh shoot forward, say, um, I don't know, two, three years. I've now formed my own school band, left school, still got the school band, um, come across a guy called Steve Marston. Steve Marston is a sax player. This guy's played, you know, session for people like Shaka Khan, for Jackie Graham, for various people, okay? Various soul greats. I hear what, I really like Steve and we just get on as mates. And he says, listen, I'm going down. I've met some people. He said, I'm going down to their basement. He said, if you want to come, just come along with me. I'm all right, fine, all right. So I just wandered down to this guy's basement and um, saw there was this group of people and a bunch, loads of records, like loads and loads and loads of records. There was a guy called Ajax Scott who was a record collector, right, Fierce. I remember. I remember Ajax. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, yeah. This is the. There'd be a few of these moments, Tommy. Wait, what? Just watch. So Ajax, right, has got this fierce record collection. We're in the house basement that this guy lives in. We, I go downstairs to the basement, and they've got a com this computer set up. You know, Atari. They're using Cubase. I'm going to myself. This is great. They've also got a sampler, and I'm like, oof, like the look of that. Um, and basically, we start, I, I, you know, they play me a song that they've done, and I said, listen, that song's really good, and there's nothing I can do with that. I said, it's just really good as it is. I said, but you might need a B-side. If you're going to put that as an A-side, you might need a B-side. And they were like, all right, fine. I said, all right. So um, the B-side we do this backing track for, we do the backing track. They then, we listen to the backing track and say, right, it needs a singer. Myself and Steve had been to Heaven Nightclub and, and there was a woman called Lady Caroline. She had a jam session at Heaven, right? Which weirdly leads, this circles back so much to the Mobos last night because one of the guys that used to jam in the jam session was Nile Rogers. He used to jam, there was only about 100 people watching, and he used to jam at the jam session at Lady Caroline's. Anyway, I, one of the people on stage was this singer, Sarah. I had seen her and thought she just looked like this amazing, I mean, she had this huge beehive. She was dressed the most originally. I just remember thinking she's really got something about her. And so I just called her and said, look, can I come, could you come round to my house? But I want to hear you sing because I, I saw you doing background vocals, but I can't do it anyway. She came round, heard her sing, my jaw dropped. I was like, right, come down to our studio. She came down to the studio. She heard the backing track and instantly started humming something. And from there, that was it. You know, she put, we were like, right, we'll go to a studio. Luckily, we had a bit of studio time at this then studio called Courtyard Studios, which is in Oxford, right? So Courtyard Studios, we go down and we this start is, this working. Is, that's Radiohead Studio, right? That's, that's Radiohead <laughs> yeah, Studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then, yeah, Radiohead. yeah, it was Van so Morrison's, I think. Before, this is, yeah, this is pre-Radiohead, right? So they, at the time, had even said to us, oh, we've just found this band. Well, like, what they called, they said, on a Friday. We were like, all right, cool. No, nothing, didn't think anything of it. 
Anyway, they then changed their name to Radiohead, but that's a whole other story. But we carried on. Chris Hufford, Bryce Edge, we did, we and Chris. So Radiohead's manager was a studio engineer, right? And he was engineering our demos, right? So he, so we then uh, do this tune. This tune, the tune that we did is a tune called I'm the One. We do this tune and um, put the thing out. And uh, it was one of those. It just, it just went. Uh, you know, we, the, we, we hand delivered it to a load of record stores ourselves. There was a lot of DIY about it. We were, we were not really into, I mean, we've been for a couple of record company meetings. I remember thinking this actually isn't good for us. At the time, I didn't realise, but I was thinking mental health-wise, but well, it just wasn't good for us. I remember thinking, we're going in, and they're trying to dictate to us what we should be writing when we kind of know what we want to dance to in a club. We know. We've just made it. So we but just also, made it. But, so. but also, you're, like, sitting there thinking, you know, like, putting all this together. So, in your, you know, you're already yeah. in a kind of artist stroke management manager role because you're already saying, first of all, you've put all this shit together anyway. You've brought everyone together. You've connected the dots. Because this is what a thing that often people, particularly outside the music industry, maybe don't know about the creative process, is that it always needs a bunch of people to kind of connect you all up. You know, yeah. it needs it need, it needs like one or two people to kind of connect you all up. It's sometimes it's somebody in the band, but it's very often it is like a manager who's going to gonna get you and take you. Because I thought, I mean, I'd still be in my bedroom making beats and, 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 rec- and, and, and writing tortured folk songs if it wasn't for a bunch of different people that dragged me out of my bedroom and got me into studios making music. And so... You know, I think that 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 is another key thing. I think is when you've got that inside of you, right, Karma, you've clearly got that inside because I'm, you know, 30 years in the industry or 25 years, whatever it is in the industry, you've got this drive to make things happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there was a, I always think bands, good ones, have got really, really good others. When I say that, I mean, you play the keyboards, but your other job is, and mine was a driver of opportunity for the band. That's one of mine. Steve's, the sax player, the guy that got me down to there, he's a, he, he was a brilliant connector of people because he was a social butterfly. Steve, literally, you could call him up and you'd be like, where are you? He'd, say, he'd be like, I'm skiing at the moment. You'd say, where? He'd say, in the Alps. And you'd go, who with? And he would say, I'm out here with the Rolling Stones. You'd be like, Steve, what do you mean? And he'd say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would really mean it. Like he was a real social butterfly. So that was Steve. I'd and love it, to I'd love to see Keith Richards on some skis. That that yeah, listen, that in itself would be an, a, a trip. That, and then and then you had Ed Baden Powell, who was who was like the kind of almost like a Buddha. Like he very, very great uh, uh playing lots of different instruments and programming. And then you had um Ned at the time, who was a beat professor, who was like very, very into triplets and, 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 you know, he'd always go on about swing and like all sorts. He would, that was his thing. And you, Ajax at the time, who was actually one of the, you know, founding people as well. So Ajax originally was kind of like, we, I think we called him a like sample master. He just used to come with records and go, okay, take this one. Is a, and then we would go, okay, well, well, we'll nick the snare from there, we'll nick the bass from there, we'll nick the blah from here. And I was like, okay, cool. And then we would reprogram everything and, and sometimes replay it as well. So there was a lot of that going on. And then obviously Sarah was the voice, but we always used to call her the grand protector of the vibe because Sarah, Sarah ethically is like on a 10 or an 11. Like she, she would, she's, she's the one that would literally be like, no, 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 we're not doing that yes 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 we're doing that no no no, we're not doing that and sometimes it would infuriate me because i'd be like what do you mean and afterwards i'd always be like actually it's really good that she said that 
So, do, do you think and, though? Do you think just come, just going into this is like a concept, right? Do you think that where so you've got an artist, a lot of artists, I mean, obviously back in that in the day, in that day, you know, this is pre sort of laptops and hard disk recording and stuff like that. So you know, people were still using like um, samplers, you know, hardware samplers, MPCs, that kind of thing. So, and, and obviously, there was people needed studios. You had to go in a studio to make music and stuff like that. There was a certain degree of investment, financial investment that needed to be there, but. What is interesting that I hear from this story is the fact that all these people were like, they were like special parts of a jigsaw. You know, they were all really, new, each one had a, a really unique kind of, uh, yeah, the, of course you were making music, but actually, like you said, the other job, what the other job that each one of them had was to kind of, was to create something that would take the music to the next level. Do you, do you what would you give like to people today? Because I'm always pushing people to collaborate. Like collaboration mm. is mm. a really, really important thing what advice would you give to people today if they're just coming into the business they've got a laptop or they're you making beats on their even on their phone for you know or ipad or whatever what what advice would you give to people today who are trying to look for people to collaborate with i think the thing here is don't be too precious like you don't know where it is going to come from and by the word it i mean the magic bow and arrow that sometimes gets placed in your hand. And if you've got the right team with you, all four or five of you point the magic bow and arrow literally at the right beast and it dies and you can move forward. <laughs> you know, so that's a great analogy. You've really <laughs> filled my head with like, you know, war paint and like grinding around yeah. like a forage somewhere. Yeah. I mean, we just, you know, if you if you're on the right if you if you've got the right squad and you can feel it as well it's like electricity right so if if you've got the right squad and you've got the right thing happening and all of that you literally you can it's just like it's electric and you heard, and you heard right at the beginning. If you, if you, if you just missed it, you heard right. At the, you wouldn't have heard at the beginning. But if you just come in, join the space. And by the way, please retweet the room. Remember, retweet the room. Oh, I haven't explained the the competition, right? Or have we explained? Good, Jester, we explained the competition. I don't think we did, right? Let's, no. Let, yeah. No, um, no. Let's drop the competition. Okay, so let's drop the competition. Okay, so the competition. You can win, right? You can go over to Toka Tracks and you can pick up. Kwame's remember that if you buy, so I'm going to explain, right? How, how, the, how the drop works. If you buy and are the proud owner of one of Kwame's NFTs, you will join Kwame's music business insight session and you will get early access to future sessions. If you buy three of his different, and remember they're all amazing artwork. So you definitely should be buying at least more than one. Anyway, buy three, you can contribute to the live discussion and you can access to recorded insights and sessions. We'll come on to Kwame can explain a little bit more about this in a minute. And then if you buy six, and this is the real this is the real kicker and i mean this is absolutely i mean i can't believe that this these aren't flying off the shelf but if you buy six six you get not only all the above uh, benefits but you get a chance to review your music session and with the man himself with kwame himself and one of the projects um, we'll get uh, a golden ticket, which is a one hour session with Kwame where he'll go through, he'll help you. And you never know if the session absolutely smashes it. He may be picking up that phone, that phone to any one of the major labels and major people and getting your track signed or at least getting your track listened to, which is in this day and age. Oh, my God, how difficult is that? Getting your track listened to. So that's what you get with this. This is a really, really fascinating job because you're getting some time with Kwame. At the very least, what you're going to get is expert expertise, right? Expertise from this man who has lived it and breathed it and is still connecting people up and still getting people signed and still having hit music. So get over to Token Tracks and you can get one of these. Go go and get it. As, as Jess said, you can buy with your credit card. That's all you need is just your credit card. Now, we are going to give away four. Is it four of these we're going to give away, Jess? Yeah? For today, it's only going to be two. There will be other giveaways, but tonight it's two. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add one myself, right? One of my own ones I will give away as well. So we're going to give away three tonight, right? Three tonight. And what you need to do to get an opportunity to win one of these, you need to, you need to uh, retweet that tweet at the top there, the one that says, want to learn from one of the best minds in the music industry. Retweet that one. 
Uh, actually, no, I tell you what, sorry. Retweet the next one. Token Tracks is proud to be working with Kwame. T- retweet that one because it's got the room in it as it is. So retweet that one. Token Tracks is proud to be working with Kwame uh, with the release of Kwame con- collection. Retweet that, and then you've got to follow Token Tracks. You've got to follow Kwame. Okay, Twitter follow, Token Tracks, Twitter follow Kwame. Retweet the Token Tracks tweet that's at the top in the Jumbotron. Retweet that. And at the end of this uh, end of this space, you've got to stay in the space because if you're not in the space at the end when I call your name out, you won't win. So you've got to stay in the space, stay in the space. And at the end, you will have an opportunity to win one of three of these, okay? Three different people are going to win. So please retweet the room. Let's go back to Kwame, Kwame, Kwame. Yes. So let's go back, my brother. Let's talk more about management. Let's talk about more of the music industry. We have both seen the music industry change beyond all recognition from when we first started in it. Totally, totally. What do you think are the good things and the bad things of that change? Woo! That's a deep. That's a deep question. That one. That's a deep question. Okay. Um, I would say clearly one of the things that needs sorting is transparency. Yeah. So the simple truth is, we are in a. We are at a time where if you sign a deal and you sign to either a major label, whichever deal you sign, what you really want is you want clarity and you want transparency. It's that thing of transparency. It's that thing of it's all very well to say, okay, I'm getting, you know, I don't know, 25% as a royalty. But it's that thing of 25% of what? That's the thing. It's 25% of what? You know, being able to get a clear answer, being able to say, if, 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 I, if I make $1 profit, how much is the artist getting and how much is the record label getting? Clearly. And that, that information being clear and consistent is, is one of the things that definitely needs sorting. So that's on the one side. And, and you need you need to have a good understanding of the industry yeah. to really know to even begin to start with. You know where does your money come from? Where's where are the royalties generated? You know songwriting royalties, master recording. That's the recording. You know the performance royalties. Where where do they all come from? There's so it's so difficult and so convoluted. There's so many different areas where this this all changes. And of course, geographically it changes as well. The laws in the US are not the same as the laws in the UK, for example. Are not so, the same as the laws in Europe. Look, right. my, my my journey, as we're saying, look, I've gone from that first thing of, you know, being in a band and then become getting signed. We were signed by Sylvia Rohn and then doing, you know, a couple of albums under the Atlantic banner or East West Records America banner. Then from that, you know, going on tour, touring with some of the biggest and the best, very fortunate, blessed, obviously, as we say, I was fortunate enough to have toured with what we called the big three, which was James Brown, Prince, and Michael Jackson, right? Hang on, hang on. Don't don't just skirt over that, mate. You supported... All of those three artists yeah. on tour. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. And also some of my other favourites too. Very fortunate, like Trouble Funk. Supported them. We supported them in Washington, which is, I mean, man, that's, <laughs> that's, a whole that's insane. So, so you know, and, and all of that. In Vogue as well, we supported. So it's, we've, we've, you know, we had a very, very good run and learnt the ropes really on the ropes because a lot of that rubs off. When you see things at a really, really big scale, you kind of go, all right, I kind of know what the top end of this tree is like, and which is a unique insight. It really is. There, I know that there are probably, I, I don't know, well, I know that we're probably in a, a unique club of one that has supported both Michael Jackson and Prince. So, so uh, you know, uh, you, that stuff that you take with you forever, coming off stage... Wembley Stadium Prince going okay I really really liked your show and us going okay and him going you want some advice we go yeah and he sits down and basically literally just takes us through our set 
and points out the point, the places in which he feels that we could have done better. And stuff like that is stuff that you're. That's insane. Yeah. Literally, you've just well, come say, off by stage. Way, I, by the way, I say to a lot of people about Prince, right? He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that. And weirdly, later on as a manager as well, I mean, I had an act. I, okay, I looked after Laura and Vula for the first five years of her career. And she was supporting Prince. And this is absolutely true. After she, she supported him, I got a call from our agent. And he basically just said, are you sitting down? I was like, what? He said, Okay, he said, you know our fee? I was like, yeah. And we hadn't really charged sort of that much. He said, I think, because we were just like, we're supporting Prince. We don't care, right? So he was like, um, he wants to double it. I said, what? He said, he wants to double it. He enjoyed the performance so much that he wants to double it. I was like, what? all right, just tell him he doesn't have to, but fine. All right, so he goes back. And he calls me a day later. He said, come on. He said, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? He said, he said, that's not enough. He's going to add some more to it. And basically, I ended up having five different conversations with the agent in which every time he called, Prince had put the price up. Right? Until... Hang on, <laughs> let's just get this clear. I know. So yeah. Prince, he, your artist is supporting Prince. Yeah. You've set a, a, a rate before the gig and then yeah. she does the gig and yeah. ev- and then he comes back and goes, it's not enough, it's not enough, it's not yeah, enough, yeah. it's he, not yeah, enough. He literally, he was like, it wasn't enough. He said, I enjoyed it so much, Because right? he used to tweet about it all the time. Right? Yeah. So, so his thing was, I, I enjoyed the gig so much. He was like, I just, I, I, I'm not, I, we got to pay more. So it, it literally was, it was haggling in reverse. So I just literally was like, okay. Anyway, I think we finished up with it basically six times the amount is what he ended up paying. And, in, and at the end, he said, yeah, okay, I think that that's all right. I think that's all right. And I remember thinking, this is, this is I've never, I've never had that happen before. No. Never. Yeah. I mean that. I mean, <laughs> it's, true, it's hard enough trying to get money out of anybody when you tour. What? What? Come on. What? Let's. And, and by uh, guys, please retweet the room if you want to get an opportunity to win Kwame's NFTs. One of Kwame's NFTs tonight. You can also, as I said before, go over to Token Tracks and you can pick one up. This is insane. You should. These should be flying now. Flying. 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 And you know what? When these are sold out, there will be no more. This is a Kwame's. You know that this is the only one he's going to do, and you're going to have to go to the secondary market where they're going to be three four times the price you know that and this is to get time with Kwame and the opportunity for him to unlock the door and potentially help you get yourself signed or potentially get some some intri- amazing collaborations that, you know going going here and also do go check out Kwame's ultimate uh, ultimate seminar and Kwame we're going to talk a little bit more about ultimate and ultimate seminar in, in a minute let's go back to let's go back to touring now so mm. So, but just before, actually before that, because we really answered the question, I feel, about collaboration, right? So where would artists now go and find each other? You know, I mean, you've got social media, you've got, obviously, um, but you've got projects like Ultimate and stuff like that, and where play, people can kind of come together. Where, yeah. where did, for, for example, where do you go looking for artists? I'm very, very fortunate in that now, because I'm known for discovering acts, there's any number of any days where I'll be invited to something that is hot. If anything now, my problem is turning things down to leave enough space for me to actually just live. <laughs> so so that's the sitch. But I, you know, I'm very fortunate. The ultimate seminar, we've got our A&R focus groups. And our A&R focus groups of, of you know, alone will will present any one of about 20 different acts during a month that they will be like, listen, you need to go and see this person perform or you need this to happen or you need to go down to this. So I just choose and listen to the people within the a focus groups that I trust 
and then I'll go to those events. So, for instance, sometimes I go by myself. Like the other day, I was saying to someone, I went to, I was in fact, what am I saying? I was saying to Mira May herself the other day that I travelled solo to her show to watch her perform because I just thought, I, and I still think she's an amazing, amazing R&B vocalist. I just think she's great. So I just went, I just, I, someone tipped me off, said go down, and I was like, yeah, okay, great. And I know a manager as well. So I was like, yeah, I'll definitely go. So yeah, and, and that's the great. But there are now, I mean, some of the places, London-wise, if you're talking about London, I would say if you're looking for talent, boy, things like Ori Jam, I'd go to East London. I'd go to Steam Down, definitely. I would go to I would go to the, any one of the jam sessions really to just go and feel and see what's happening. I would probably go to maybe one of the Mobo Unsung nights I'd go to, or I would definitely go to. So, oh, have I got? Have we got right? So there's no. You say you say. Yeah, I said I'd go to Ultimate Live. You know, there's that. So. So these are like kind of open mic nights. They're kind of get togethers within, within industry. I mean, is there, you know, for those that are not necessarily in London, is there, and I'm not talking about specifics here, but you, you, you know, for listening to that list, they're very much open mic nights. They're very much kind of community uh, driven events. Um, do you, do you feel, is that the sort of thing that you would want to be looking at? You know, what about online? How about finding things online or finding artists online? Oh man, the on the online thing. I mean, again, again, I'm very fortunate with stuff. Some of the stuff, like I mean, one of my probably one of my biggest success acts came from weirdly Facebook. I used to do a thing that was called Kwame's Question of the Day on Facebook. Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Question ninety was who do you think is the most underrated person that you know? Two of my friends from completely different areas. One was living in the south of France. There's a guy called Neil Conti, who's the drummer for Prefab, an old band called Prefab Sprout. And then uh, another person, another friend up in Liverpool, both said, there's this girl. Um that you need to check out and her name is Rumour, basically. So I was like, all right, fine. And I went, checked her out and I remember thinking to myself, okay, this girl's really, really good. Funny enough, my wife was pretty instrumental in that because the first two songs that I heard, I remember thinking I'm not sure about. And uh, I had already put my headphones down and my wife listened to tracks three and four and said, you need to come back and listen to this. So I went back and listened to it and sure enough, Tracks three and four, one of them was a track called Slow. And I remember thinking to myself, this song is just incredible. It went on to be her first single. I then got her signed to Atlantic Records. Um, and her album came out and did has done a million units. So it's, you know, for, uh, using socials, I'm all, I'm all down with. I haven't got a problem with, you know. And that's a really good point, actually, because recommendation through social media or recommendation through, you know, uh, the the community uh, that you you surround yourself with, with um, is a really, really, you know, it's a great way of finding new music. It's a great way of finding people to collaborate. And therefore, it's really important to join as many different communities as possible and get out there and join as many different communities as possible. I, one of the things I would always recommend is just, you know, just say yes, just get out there, find things to do. You know, open mic nights are really good to find local artists that you can work with. But and, that, and that is something that means you can both be in a room working on music together, which I do personally think is really, really important. Not essential. But it is does help if you're in a room and you're vibing off of each other and someone's doing one thing and you're doing another and you, you know, I maybe think, you know what I'm I, saying. I think open mic the great thing about open mics is open mic nights is or, or, or jam sessions is that a person comes off stage and you can grab them. You can literally just be like, Do you know what? I really like what you just did. Here's my number. Let's, you know, let's let's talk and let's see if we can make something happen. And you can do that. That's what's great, you know? So, yeah, that's what I really like about open mic nights. But, yeah, there's a look. These are, just to, to, to go back into a question that you asked earlier, 
some of the, you like some of the things that you like and some of the things that you don't like about the music industry. I told you one of the things I didn't like, obviously, was the lack of transparency in contracts that I'd love, you know, to be a part of sorting out or just, you know, help along the way. Um, but one of the things I love, as I said, live music, you know, that the, live music, there's so many things that just can't be beat about it. And and what one of the things that we all learned in lockdown was how much we missed it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's something to bear in mind that as an artist yourself, you know, or, or if you are an artist or you're a producer or a singer or whatever, or you want to break into management or any of that kind of stuff is to go out and support music, go out and support, go to gigs, you know, make the effort. I know it's a lot easier sometimes to just sit there and, you know, go through social media and sweep backwards and forwards and tweet TikTok and whatever and order delivery or, or Uber Eats or whatever it is, your local <laughs> delivery yeah, yeah. food service. Yeah. But, you know, artists and creative people, they need our support more than ever. So please get out there and, you know, go to gigs, go to nightclubs, listen to DJs, find out the music, go and support them. I mean, we're all we're all loving this, the, our Spotify, you know, uh, wrap-ups at the moment. You know, it's great and lovely to see. But what it shows is how much much in music is important to us on a daily basis and how much music defines everything we do defines our emotions it defines our feelings it defines our life itself and so you know it's great for spotify to be giving us that service you know for those that you people that use spotify but you know the problem we've got with streaming obviously is, is the, the 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 ridiculous rates around how much music is is valued in that world and how it's all been diminished to zero um, i'm not going to talk about that because we don't want to talk about that but listen we've only literally had five six retweets of this this tweet do you guys are you insane you lot first and <laughs> foremost i've redone it up there right token tracks is proud to be working with Kwame to just retweet that tweet all you got to do is retweet that tweet, follow Token Tracks and follow Kwame, right? Just do those three things and you might get a chance to win one of these NFTs, one of Kwame's incredible NFTs, which just for the artwork and the music alone are worth the money. They are so, so, so beautiful. They are so, so wicked. Um, let's talk a little bit about this, this, this project. Let's talk about how did you, you know, where, where, where did you first find out about like, you know, blockchain and NFTs? A guy called Shay Awatunde. I was on, I was, okay, so I guess lockdown has a lot to answer for. So this is how it works. I had come out of hospital. I had COVID and I had it bad. And I was in the hospital and I had a ventilator machine and all sorts. And I was, I remember being in the hospital and just thinking, you know, what, when I come out, I'm really going to try just some new things. I'm really going to try some new things. I don't care what, I'm going to try some new things. And um, and it was almost me willing myself to come out of hospital. Anyway, I came out of hospital um, after a stay in and um, I, I was sat on my couch. I got my phone. I pointed it at my face and I just, start, I went on to Creating Vision's Instagram. So Creating Vision, as I said, is one of, the um, I'm a co-director of, which is a an organisation that basically gives a lot of um, music advice, but during events to new, just to people, anybody who wants to learn. Anyway, I was sat on the couch. I pointed the phone to my face and just started speaking and saying, "Hey, anybody that wants a little bit of music advice." music business advice, right, what you've got to do is just, just contact. So loads of people started hitting me up on Insta Live. So I would just go on and just do a bit of advice here, bit of advice here, bit of advice here. And pretty soon that became a little bit of a tsunami. So we kind of went to, from 20 people to 40 people to 100 people to 150 to 200 to 300. And it just, it started to get a bit, So I then was like, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite people to be guests on this. And one, so I started that and soon it again started to escalate. You know, next minute, you know, Darkus was doing, came on and just lots of different. For for those, just so for those that don't know, who's Darkus? 
Darkest was, but he was president of Island Records at the time. So actually. president of yeah. Island Records just yeah. happens to come on to your space because he because he what because he he your mates with him, right? Yeah. So he he just came, yeah exactly. So he's okay. So Darkest is the guy that signed Amy Winehouse, right? So he came he came on actually during somebody else actually was on at the time and he just happened to hit the wrong button crash it and just was like now nah, i'm staying on come on let's chat so he was you know he was doing his thing that's classic darkest um but yeah he was one of the people but there were many other record companies that I, I was on it i remember being exactly. like, it was brilliant yeah, yeah. it was brilliant yeah. mate Lots of people came on MBOL. It was a, yeah, exactly, a music business. It was called MBOL Show because it stands for Music Business on Lock, right? So, it, as in, in lockdown, but that's the whole situation. Anyway, so, Shay was one of the people that basically was really, really excited about NFTs. And as he was talking, loads of other interested NFT people all started crashing the conversation. And I listened and listened and listened and listened. This was two, two and a half years ago. I was just listening and listening and listening. I was just like, this is incredible. This is amazing. And it really, really got me going because I just remember thinking, this is new. But actually, you can apply a bit of what you already know to it. And, and, and if you can understand that, you know, you need the main thing and you need a wallet and, you know, that all of these, if you can kind of, Get your head around that, but at the heart of it, make sure that art and community are at the heart of what you're doing. I think this is, and that really suits me to the T. So I was like, all right, cool. So my whole thing was, what I'll do is, I'm going to get art, art wise, I'm going to get imagery together and I'm going to fuse that with music. Um, and I happened to be showing the NFT as it was to a mate who said, no, no. He said, you need to add yourself as part of the utility bit. I was like, what? He said, yeah. He said, advisory. He said, that's what you do. You're great at giving advice. You're really, really good at giving advice. He said, go ahead. He said, do it. So I was like, all right, fine. So that was how, that was, that was. And then obviously I then was speaking to you who you had said, oh, you know, we've got the token tracks thing together and, 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 and. and uh, at the time, I had another company that was really interested, obviously, in the NFT. And, uh, and you were like, nah, come, come this way instead. And uh, I remember looking at your, the site, token track site, and thinking, this is like really together. I just thought, all right, cool. Yeah, I'll do that. So that was it, really. And, Amazing. And it's, been, and it's been really, listen, um, to anybody listening, token tracks, very, very good company. I'm not just saying that, but also Jess has been amazing for me in that she's taught me so much, you know, and I think this whole thing of, you know, actually understanding that it's, it's almost like, it's an NFT, it's like a living thing, right? So it's, it's, it's something that you, you, you don't just, you don't just do it. It's about explaining it to people, making people understand what it is, making under people understand what it is that they can gain from it. And it's also about the spirit of adventure. That's the other thing I love about it. So, you know, I remember talking with you, you know, Tommy, and just going, do you know what? I just want to do it. I, I just want to do it. Just do it. Let's make something. Don't worry too much about, you know, just make something make something that people can access let's make everything accessible as accessible as possible and and also what i love about this in your drop is that it, it, this is something that we talk about a lot when you know we get artists coming in talking to us and, and you're right there is a lot of just like curiosity around it you know it, it, you're working towards them feeling comfortable enough to do it whether it's a new artist who's unsigned or whether it's a big major artist or a historic you know, legacy artists that's, you know, whatever. Everybody's interested in this space and what, what the opportunities are because, you know, it is quite clear on, you know, on the tin, so to speak, it's quite clear on the tin what, 
where this could go and how exciting this space could be and what the opportunities are for not just, you know, the the fan, as I said, the creative fan, like relationship, but also for creativity in itself and, and how we can, as creative people, how we can go out and do try out different things. My own project, the Graffiti 6 Revolution Track Stems project, which is also available uh, on Token Tracks, you can go and check it out, is a generative music and art project. And it's, and it, I will, go and check it out. It's a Thank really, you. really fascinating project. And you couldn't do that without blockchain and nft technology um please guys retweet the room we're going to be announcing this soon so if you want a chance of winning one of kwame's uh, nfts tonight you've got to retweet the, the tweet at the top there the one that says token tracks is proud to be working with kwame bang, 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 on the release of the of, of the um the kwana collection now why why kwana ah okay so um the artist that I first went to with the idea was uh, Anna Carlyle. And um, <coughs> Anna just got it straight away. She was like, yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, 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 we can do this. And uh, so, and also, and then when I turned around with the whole idea of putting the music behind it was I went to... Um, my son, Namali, and so he's got N in his name, I've got KW in my name, and then you've got NA from Anna, right? So it's it just the whole, all it's everybody's names together, Kwana. Oh, that's just, that's that simple. That's that's wicked, mate. Yeah, yeah, um, it's everybody's names together. And and, and and she did she did the the artwork. Is that right? Yeah, quite. So Anna Carlyle was very much. She was very much like okay. I, she's very much like, okay, I work really well under instruction. So she was like, tell me what you need. And we're, and literally, so we just tinkered and tinkered and tinkered and tinkered and tinkered with it until it was right. And as soon as it started to feel right, it was, from there, it was game on, you know? So it just, she hit a point and it was just like, okay, everything coming back was, was right about it. So then I was like, all right, fine, but now it's the music. So then it was a case of getting into the studio and doing what I love doing, which is searching for the perfect bass line via keyboards. So, yeah, that's, that was that. And, and uh, luckily, again, you know, so my, my son is, uh, with his Blue Lab Beats posse, oh, great. So he was just like, yeah, come, let's do it. In fact, it was him really that said come into the studio. He was like, Dad, let's just do something this weekend. And it just so happened what we had done just fit the artwork perfectly. Yeah, the, 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 the two go together so brilliantly. And I think, again, this is another ridiculously exciting thing about this digital collectible NFT community concept is it's bringing art and music back together. It's bringing that experience kind of back together. A bit like, you know, we used to do with albums and that's something that's got lost you know, the vinyl album that you used to hold in your hand and you'd have it and it would a good gatefold sleeve or you'd study the credits on the back or it had weight to it, it had some value to it. So that when you were listening to the music, your experience had value. So everything about that added to the music, you know, and that is one of the things I love about this space is it's bringing that kind of feeling of, oh, I'm really loving the music, I'm loving the artwork. The two are completely connected and, the, and you absolutely get that. That with your drop, mate. I mean, the, the artwork is stunning, absolutely stunning. Yep. Well, I have to say, um, you know, big up to Anna. Huge, a, a massive big up to Anna. And, and the music, and him, yeah, and, and and the and the boy, and the boy, he's yeah, done a yeah. brilliant job and on a the huge, massive, massive big up to uh, Namali as well for for helping that to just be realized really the whole thing so you know that it's it's been a, a a good old trip and i'm 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 just you know i am over the moon that they started to sell because again as you know tommy it was just a a a dream to make an nft or to make a do a drop or to make a set you know and make that happen and we've you know we've made it happen so for me that was that was everything and still is 
you know, and the, ne the next bit will be just as exciting, you know, doing the advisory sessions. I'm really looking forward to that. So, yeah, all good. Amazing, mate. Um, Jess, sorry, you got your hand up. And then, you know, let's come to uh, Yuma as well. We'll come to you afterwards. But Jess, first of all, you. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say if um, we could do a, some questions and answers afterwards. But I do want to point out one thing about um, the audio. So if you, if you go to Token Tracks, to our Discover page, you're going to see the 12 different Kwana collectibles. So we've got 12 different characters. They've got their names. And if you join the masterclass, you'll get some more insight to why they've been called those names and numbers, yeah. um, why they've got those titles. So there is a bit of a backstory. But yeah. with the music, if you go through the different kwanas, if you go through the different characters, you're going to hear different clips for the music. So you're going to hear all the music in its entirety. So uh, each, each kwana, each collectible has a different uh, clip from the, the, the entire song, from the, from the, from the track. So uh, if you want to check it out, so you get to hear uh, um, what uh, Kwame and Namali have, have, have created. You know, you hear the song in its entirety. But I do want to, yeah, Yom has been waiting. So, yeah, if we've, got a, we've got a question. So go ahead. Oh, hi. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, brilliant. Hi, good evening, everyone. And um, Kwame, Tommy, this has been really insightful, brilliant listening to you. This is my first time I've just happened upon a Twitter space live thing. So <laughs> really excited. Um, and yeah, I just want to take advantage of the opportunity to ask a question, uh, Kwame. Um, Go ahead. Regards to the music. And it's the questions around um, when an artist has got some music to put out there to release and I, I'm sort of like trying to understand the uh, perhaps the benefits or the best routes for promotion. And I've had conversations with people and it's about whether or not an artist should push for sales of their music online or streams via, you know, the likes of Spotify, um, which, you know, which is better. But that may be a kind of like it depends kind of thing. So I suppose my follow on question is maybe top tips. Okay, oh, top tips. Yeah. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, I would say all of the above. So mm -hmm. sales and streams. So I, a very good example of this is, as I was saying, I, I manage Blue Lab Beats, right? So the thing with them is on the one hand, streaming-wise, they have some songs uh, that are streaming really well. Um, they probably done about 50 million streams total so far but it, they're physical so the whole thing about you know sale they're physical which is vinyl also does well you know it yeah. also does well you know it, when you go you print like 2000 uh, albums for them uh, and they will sell out and then you'd, you know, you'd have another print run of another thousand, thousand and a half, and those will sell out. So they have very, very good um, follower base. And so to me, it's this thing of don't, don't sleep on physical, mm -hmm. just the same as you don't sleep on digital. Most people are like, well, of course, yeah, I'm going to put stuff and make it available for streaming. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. And my thing is, is always be looking at, at, at uh, physical and also, you know, or be looking if you can as an as an act, just be looking at as as many different forms of interaction yeah. with your music as possible. So I'll give you again a, a good example. And I do this. I, I say this a lot when I'm you know, either lecturing or explaining things to an act. It's, when I have an act that's sold out a venue, one of the things that I do is I will walk outside and I will walk down the line, the queue, and I will ask every person, how did you find out about this act? And invariably, there are hundreds of different routes to finding an act. 
Yeah. So uh, what I'm saying to them, how do you how do you know about this act? Somebody will say, oh, my friend's aunt was playing it when I was around their house, and I asked. So that's one. Okay, two. I heard it from Spotify Radio. Two, three. Mm. I heard a remix which had sampled a bit of one of their songs. I then tracked back and found out what the sample was and came across them. Three, four. I heard a remix that they had done of another act. Four, five. I, you know, and it goes on. When you go down the queue, right, you you become more and more and more and more surprised. So what that told me was, okay, what you have to do is open the amount of pathways that there are to your act. Yeah. And they're all really important. So it's, it's fine to concentrate on a few to start. Don't overwhelm yourself, but just keep adding to the kind of doors of the room. Think of it as a room that when you first start has only got one door in. But by the time you've done a year and a bit and blah, 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 what happens is you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven routes yeah. in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And basically you just keep building doors to that room. Okay. There's a there's um, a theory in marketing, right, which is called 30 touch points, right? And the, the theory is, is that a brand needs 30 touch points. Um, you as a consumer need to connect with a brand in th- on 30 different occasions before you remember that brand, right? Yeah. So taking that into music and, and following on from exactly what Kwame said, th- think of as many different ways of getting to people as possible. And, and, and Kwame is exactly right. If you spend one, if you spend all your effort working in one area you know you are you are technically you know uh, neglecting other areas where certain things might happen i mean also do not underestimate what you can do with nfts because there are artists out there and big shout out to josh josh savage is in who's in the, the crowd out there one of the amazing uh, in fact he's coming up here we go well he can tell you all about it we'll get josh up um uh, he he is a, a, an NFT artist, and you know there are many different NFT artists now. Not not huge amounts, probably less than five hundred, but there are many of them that are making ma- way 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 more money um, of than they've ever made on streams. And and that is such a really really important thing. You have to work hard. You have to manage your community. You have to give them perks. You have to be part of it. But you know you're doing that already as an artist. You're going out. You're playing gigs. You're doing social media. You're doing your TikTok blah 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 you're just adding in uh, a level of exclusivity by doing it through nfts so definitely check out if you want more information about nfts come over to token tracks and check out what they're doing here coming to tokens uh, twitch spaces really really good also in my koji link in my twitter uh, profile if you see there's a koji link in there there is um, a whole bunch of different information about nfts if anybody out there is interested in nfts just go into my koji link there's a there's an actually thing called an nft resource token tracks nft resource loads of different articles and and links to all kinds of different things a lot of different information there's also a bunch of different videos and things like that you can find through token tracks as well to help you understand this space but the first thing i would always say to do is when you want to do anything is just jump in and do it and in that respect go and buy some people's nfts you know it costs you maybe 15 20 bucks or something like that so you know i know money's difficult at the moment but it feels really nice to support some music directly there with with the artist if you really like an artist then give them a little bit of a sport it's like it's if you were on the the subway or whatever and you just saw a busker and you just like what they were doing and you just you know tap your phone on there and give them like five bucks or something it's the same kind of feeling but it's just even more exciting because you've started a relationship with that artist you've created a connection with that artist josh it's great to have you up um and and uh, uh, you are a great example of an nft artist that does does really well in this space maybe you could tell uh, the, the everybody a little bit about yourself and um and how you got into the space and you know how you, your your what you've done to create because you just sold out your drop which is insane 888 uh, nfts that josh has sold and and maybe you could explain to people how you did it yeah, of course. Hi from Miami and uh, good to see you here, Kwame. I really enjoyed your creating vision event. It was bloody brilliant. Learned a lot from that. Oh, thanks, man. Brilliant. Nice one. And um, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a British singer-songwriter based in Berlin. I'm currently in Miami for Art Basel. And um, 
basically I got started in music NFTs earlier this year. I just kind of was excited about crypto and the NFT space and I like to try new things and and I started dropping my music NFTs which sold out um every single time and I started like really small supply and grew my um grew my community through that and shout out to all my savage DJ DJs in the room here. And um and uh, it's been an absolute game changer and allowed me to uh, reinvest in my work, reinvest in um, new recordings and my home studio so I can keep growing and and also invest in a lot of amazing tours that I was on this year as well. And um, and just kind of grew from strength to strength. And I, I just loved how I just had a much deeper connection with my fans on a global, um, on a global basis, just from basically um touring the, the the world in in my pjs in twitter spaces basically and um i thought that was really special and it's just amazing that people valued my music and would actually put money on the table for me to to keep growing and and so uh yeah uh, last last week we made british music history where i was the first british independent act to sell out a collection of, of that size and and it's been absolutely incredible and it's just yeah I'm so so grateful because my life's just been completely changed today compared to compared to last year. And the great thing about this is, um, and thanks very much for, for jumping on and Josh and letting us and telling us the story. The great thing about this is that you've got a whole bunch now of really informed, passionate, excited, engaged, skin in the game collectors or fans or partners as i like to call them because they're partners in you as a, that are now out there pushing your music and taking your music to different places and so you in a way you've got a little army of people who want you to do well because they've got skin in the game and this is something that's very powerful concept around crypto nfts is this concept of tokenized engagement tokenized economy um and and so um kwame let me come back to you and we're going to listen i'm going to wind this space down in about five ten minutes retweet the room retweet the room stay in the room retweet the room you will get a chance to win one of kwame's nfts tonight and you know please you've got to do this because it's such a great drop and it's going to be this one of the this is i don't as far as i know i don't know anybody that has done this like this where they are literally like selling nfts of their time of the potential to get time with one of the you know one of the most successful music british music managers right now who can pick up the phone to any pretty much any a and r any uh, record company executive and get through and talk to them and tell them about potentially about your project i can't oversell this concept enough because it's such you know i'm not saying it's a fast track i'm not saying that because you still got to be good you got to be good you got to be good you got to be good, good. You know, but you know, one project is going to get some. Oh, sorry about that. One project is going to get some super love um, from Kwame, and uh, and maybe it's yours. It could be yours, but you can't do it unless you own at least f at least three, I think, NFTs. And of course, you can always add. So if you enjoy what Kwame is doing, if you enjoy it, and you want to be part, you know, you want to get in an opportunity to get into that that top layer, you can go and buy more. Or buy, go if they're all sold out, you go on the secondary market. But if you go on a secondary market, they'll be more expensive than they are now. So go and get these these NFTs. They're fantastic. Um, Kwame, let's come back to you. Let, talk to me a little bit. Let's tell tell everybody about creating vision. This is wow. such a beautiful thing. Talk a bit about creating vision, please, man. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so creating vision. 2010, myself, Andrea Ewell, Nicola, who was then Charles, but is now Asai because she's married. Um, we start this thing called Creating Vision, and the idea was to, first of all, put on a thing called The Ultimate Seminar, which was a series of panels on the music business, but centered around giving information. It was almost like an A to Z of the music industry, but in a day. It's very intense. You turn up, I mean, this year, a really good example. We 
open the doors at maybe 10 past nine. I think by 10 o'clock it was full. Um, we probably had passed through during the day between 800 to 1,000 people. Um, it's, 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 uh, it's, music it's the music business the what one of the ways that we one of the things that we used to describe it is if you imagine um a book on the music industry the seminar is the it, one of the invisible oral seams that helps bind the pages so we say that because there's a lot of stuff that you can read that is quite correct about the music industry. But having somebody actually tell you through their experiences about the ups, the downs, the pitfalls, the things to watch out for, the kind of almost like industry hacks, like suddenly that's become a real thing. Now, obviously, we've been doing, we're, this is our 13th year, and um, we just had one um this november obviously just just gone and um yeah it was it's amazing anyway so we have imagine a day where you have uh, say one panel on marketing another panel is called knowing your business which is centered around um knowing your business but from the legal from the accounting from the uh nft web3 obviously we feature tommy this this uh this year um, Tommy's spoken for us before as well. I mean, we've uh, when then you go down, you have we had a major mindset panel which had um, top executives from Parlophone, top executives from uh, Universal, from Sony, from you know, we just it, the whole thing is like a day where. At the beginning of the day, you might not know anything. By the end of the day, you'll know a lot and you'll feel as though you've literally had three encyclopedias shoved into your head. Uh, and and you hopefully, at the end of it, you, you, you lie down, go to sleep, wake up, and it all begins to sort of seep in, you know? And that's and, really what it is. And I, the thing I loved about it was, was that, you know, I ended up going to the pub with a bunch of different students and yeah. chatting to them about their work and, and music. So it's not just like one of these seminars where you turn up and you can't talk to anybody. Everybody sticks around. Everyone has yeah, a chat. Yeah, yeah. It's a really lovely vibe because everybody's there, you know, because it's such a good vibe. And there are so many interesting, exciting people. It's particularly good if you're interested in the sort of business side, I think, yeah. of, the, of, yeah. of, the, of the industry. But, you know, there's millions of artists that come along and Josh was there and, you know, Josh, you just said, wouldn't it? It was great. You, you, you said how much you enjoyed it. I think it's a really, really good one. And now, you, is there an online version of this or kind of an online version of this? Well, it's weird. Actually, this year, we, we, normally we live stream. But this year, we didn't live stream. Um, we probably will return to either live streaming or filming each individual panel and then putting that up. Because obviously some of the advice is, is sort of priceless, gem-like. But I think sometimes, I don't think it's a bad thing to occasionally not live stream. Because it's that thing of, you got to go to the event. <laughs> you know? So... And people, also, also, this is insanely valuable stuff that yeah. people are giving out information left, right, and center. And you know, to be honest with you, and and let, you know, we should take this offline, mate, because absolutely, we should we should put this into not only into in some way into Kana, but also into a wider kind of project, specifically around creating vision. You know, because it's it, it it's it's absolutely perfect for something like tokenization and getting people into it. And remember, when you buy an NFT, it's, I know it sounds like oh, it's tech, oh, it's really incredible I don't know. you can just buy with a credit card you don't need to do do anything you can buy with a credit card and once you do that it will create what's called a digital wallet and it's like just like a normal wallet it keeps your valuables in it it's a digital wallet that has your nft in there and you can move that nft around into another wallet into a personal wallet or you can keep it in that and that wallet is like your key into whatever world we say it can go into. So it could be Kwame's world, it could be a Token Tracks world, it could be a Tommy D world, it could be a Josh Savage world, it could be anything. And that, you know, and, and so for example, for creating vision, this is perfect because, you know, if you want to get, get access to the, uh, the the videos or you want to get access to, to different members or something like that, this is a great way of being able to do it. Um, I'm going to wind this space down now. Um, 
before we announce a winner, um, Kwame, yeah. let's have let's have one. No, let's have two. Two incredible things that you've learned th about uh, the music business. Or no, let's have one incredible thing you've learned about music business, and one incredible thing that you're really looking forward to for the future. Oh, wow. Okay, incredible thing that I've learned about the music business. is weirdly thing ha things happen in cycles and uh that sounds like a really really obvious statement but an artist landing right there is a kind of cycle and it's almost like if you move your finger in a perfect uh, circle right sometimes when an artist starts they might think oh I've tried I've tried I've tried and that what's really happened is, is they've got three quarters of the way around the circle and they've stopped I think what the music business teaches you is that there are many things in it that are cyclical fashion within it is cyclical sound within it is cyclical even lyrical content is, is kind of cyclical. You start listening and going, hold on a minute. But I know that people were saying that in, you know, 10 years ago, because I've got the music to prove it. Or suddenly you're listening to sounds and you're going, yeah, but those sounds really sound like these sounds, but they still are of today. Do you know what I mean? So the cyclical nature of music is, is really, uh, I find it fascinating. So I, f I find that fascinating and I, and I love it. And I also, I, I love, I guess, the, um, the advisory that you can get within that. So just from, from being able to recognize it and being able to say, ah, oh, I can see what that is. The, the, the amount of advisory that then flows back to you is, is really quite something. Now, I, a lot of what I said there, I might have been talking in abstract terms, but I know you got it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's like, you know, that, that, that I definitely agree with you about cyclical because the thing is, is that often, um, you know, often ideas uh, and concepts and, and sounds and stuff like become cyclical. You know, it's like the, obviously guitars aren't particularly big at the moment, but they're going to come back round again. You know that because they, it always does. And, and beats and particularly beats, I always think, you know, like reggaeton was a couple of years ago and then it's like a different beat now. You know, so it's like I think I always think with music, there is always opportunities to delve in. But the key for me is never copy any one piece of music. Deconstruct it. Like, say you love, like, Dre, right? I love, you know, or let's say you love Dre. You deconstruct his music and you go all the way back down to the beginning, the beat, how it feels, what the kind of sounds they're using on the drums, the samples, the way everything moves together harmonically, rhythmically, the lyrics, the vocal, the way the, sa the vocal sits in it. You, just, you deconstruct all of that and then you take something else you like, like Bark, and you do the same thing and you deconstruct bark. And what you then have is you have two bucket buckets of Lego bricks. And then what you can do is start taking Lego bricks, bricks from each of the buckets and adding and building something new. And that's how you create new music It's not to follow the same thing. It's to follow lots and lots of different things. And that's why you should never stop listening to music. You should always, always, always keep listening. And because you never know what you're going to hear. And also what you're doing is you're flooding your brain with sound. You're flooding it and it's getting all stored away in your subconscious. And when you come to make up sounds and come to make up ideas, all of that music is coming back as an amalgamation, as a bunch of Lego Tommy, bricks all coming together. But Tommy, that's the wonderful thing. Like, if you look at a music like hip hop, right? The wonderful thing about it is, and this is why I always say when someone says, oh, you know, I just listen to hip hop. I'm always like, well, hold on. The samples within hip hop are coming from rock. They're coming from um, esoteric Japanese records. They're coming from every which corner of the world, right? They're coming from an Afri a, a, a sort of an African uh, or an East African uh, set of singers. You know, they're coming from 
South African choral singing. They're coming from, they're coming from New Zealand. The samples are coming from everywhere. So you just saying, oh, I just listen to hip hop. Well, you might think you're just listening to hip hop, but you're you're you've actually listened to a record that has had stitched within it music from every continent going. So this is this is what we're in, you know. Which in turn has every music stitched in it, which in turn has every music, and so Absolutely. on and so on and so on and so on. Right. And that is that is the wonderful thing about making music is is that you've you you'd no idea where these ideas come from. Some people think it's religious, some people think it's science. I think it's a sort of combination of the two myself. But what I do know is that the more you listen to music, the more you take in, the more you pick up, the more diversity that you have. And this is actually one of the beautiful things about DSPs like Spotify and Apple Music and so forth, is the ability to find music now is so incredible. It really is. It's you know they that listening thing they've got down pat. Unfortunately, it's the it's the getting paid bit they need to work on. But that's why we're building what we're building with Web3 and Token Tracks. Please go and check out Token Tracks. T-O-K-E-N-T-R-A-X-X. Please go check out what Kwame is up to. Um, I'm going to announce a winner. I'm going to announce three winners. Okay, the first winner. Let's see if we can get... Hang on. Can we get, like... Let me know. I just want to remind people, some people retweeted um, the pinned tweet, but you have to be following both Kwame and Token Tracks, so I don't want people to miss out. You still here? Oh, 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 well, what? Hang on, what? Oh, oh. I'm still here. I'm still here. Oh, hang on. What, what, what? Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Oh, Loud okay. Clear. Um, okay. So, Jessica Rodriguez, Jessica, give us a couple of hearts. Jessica, are you there? Are you there, Jessica? Yes, she's in the audience. Jessica Rodriguez, if you can DM uh, Token Tracks. There you go. Thanks, Jessica. Lovely. DM Token Tracks. And uh, we will get this sent to you. Okay, the next winner is da, 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 da. Tara is divent. Divent? <laughs> is Tara Tara? Yay! Tara Lucky Tara. Well. Lucky Tara. Okay. And last but not least, the last one. And remember, if you didn't win it, you can just go over and pick one up. They're not exactly expensive. The last winner is. <laughs> Daxinger.avax. Yes, Daxinger.avax. Are you there? Are you there? Are you in the audience? Is he? Oh, hang on. Hang on. He's not there. He's not here. No, he's not here. No, he's gone. Right. Sorry. You had your chance. Okay. Let's go another one. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Uh, how about Whisper829.eth? Whisper829.eth. Are you there? Whisper829.eth. Yes, you are. Yes. I Whisper, fantastic, brilliant. Those are the winners. So congratulations to Whisper. Congratulations to Jessica and congratulations to Tara. Please DM uh, Token Tracks. If you can't DM Token Tracks, DM Jess or me and uh, we'll get it sorted and we'll get those NFTs over to you. Unfortunately, if you didn't win, sorry about that, but you can still go over to the Token Tracks website. Go and check out some of the other things. We've got Psycho YP. We've got, um, who else is going? Oh, of course, my Token my Graffiti 6, which is on sale at the moment. I'm selling $1, an, an NFT for $1. That's insane. So go and check it out. Beautiful, loads of stuff. If you're interested in coming on Token Tracks, it is talent at tokentracks.com, talent at tokentracks.com. We have uh, loads of people that are coming on. We've got loads of things coming up. It's, got, it's just full on in token tracks world it's an amazing company super proud of everyone i want to say a massive thank you to jess jess thank you so much for sorting all of this out you've been incredible yes yes jess. Jess. Yes, yes, jess. yes um you're very welcome and kwame so i'm looking forward like creating vision was amazing and that place was packed like yeah, was lineup packed and to, so what we're going to be doing in the the masterclass, it's just going to be so amazing having um, a Web three community there to to yeah. to get to get these these gems. So I'm very I'm very excited for this. And thank you everyone for joining the space. Today. And, Im and imagine if imagine if we got like an artist coming through this. And Kwame just fell in love with it and, you know, made some calls and got signed and then this thing blew up. Wouldn't that be insane? Wouldn't that be incredible? Do you know the funniest thing? When we started the A&R focus groups, 
we I remember us sort of saying, hey, wouldn't it be great if, and here we are, you know, what, X amount on years on from creating them with, you know, uh, arguably one of the, one of the biggest TikTok songs, um, I don't know what, in, in the last, I don't know, 12 months. I mean... And that's just how it works, though, isn't it? I mean, this yep. is the thing. This is how it works. We, uh, as connectors of, of people, we never know where the next, you know, Bad Bunny or whatever is going to walk through the door or send us a track or, or, get, or DM us, you know. And, and so I'm always open to it. That's why my DMs are always open on Twitter, because I never know what's going to come through the door. And, 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 you know, to be perfectly honest with you, 99 times out of 100, it, it, it's like, look, good luck. It's not for me, blah, 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 blah. And that doesn't mean it, it's not good. It just means I haven't can't quite hear that spark, that little spark that I need to kind of fire to go to take me. And it's it might, it's just for me. That doesn't mean it's not, you know, just because it doesn't work for me doesn't mean it doesn't work for somebody. It might work for Kwame, but not for me. It might work for me and not for Kwame or somebody else. You know, this is how it works in music business. You need to find, like, this goes back, all the way back to what we started with this whole thing. Collaboration, getting together with people, finding people. Don't be scared to reach out to them. The beautiful thing about uh, social media is you don't need to, you can hide behind a profile picture you know and the beautiful thing about nfts is you can continue that relationship nobody needs to know who you are if you don't if you're not if you're not particularly good sociably or anything like that you know you can still make music you can still do incredible things some of the best music people i've ever worked with are some of the most awkward people in real life right you know that's just how it is i'm afraid uh, it kind of maybe comes <laughs> goes to the territory sometimes right 100 percent all right, Kwame, thank you. It's been an absolute joy as always. I love, I love just chatting with you anyway. You're one of my favorite people um, to just shoot the breeze with and, and talk. And it's been such, a, such an honor to have you at Token Tracks. It's just really amazing, this project. It's a brilliant starting point. And, and that's where it is. It's a brilliant starting point. Who knows where this project will go? Who knows what other incredible things Kwame will throw into the NFT bucket if you're an NFT owner? As I said, go over there, pick one of them up. The artwork's beautiful. The music's insanely brilliant. And the opportunities to hang out with Kwame and talk about your projects and, 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 and take this whole thing further is insane. So go and do it. Massive thanks to Jess. Massive thanks to everybody to come along. Have a great night tonight, guys. Take it easy. Last word from you, Kwame. Wow, it's been a blast. I love it. It's something new and onwards is all I can say. Yeah, loved it. Keep building, keep believing, kids. Have a good one. Take care. Have a great night. Bye. Bye.